Hello, I'm in Cito4 and in this tutorial I will teach you how to make a customization screen for your game. This tutorial is quite long, so I split it into two videos. The link for part 2 will be in the description, and you will also be able to find the link to the models and scripts in the description. First, let's start with the UI. Click on the plus icon next to Start GUI, and go to Screen GUI. Now inside here, click on the plus icon on Screen GUI, and now we want to create a button. Now click on the button, and go to Properties. If you don't have Property window, then go to View, and Enable Properties here. Now in the Property window, scroll down, and go to Size. Now UI size have two values, as you can hear, see here. It has two X values and two Y values. In order to make the UI scalable for different devices, you need to use the first value. So I'll change these second values to zero. I change these first value to 0 0.5. Now we can make these a bit smaller. So. Let's make a button like this. Now double click on the button to change the text. Now I want this to be a arrow to the left. The properties again. And text skills enabled. Now the text will scale to the button size. Now you can press Ctrl and D to duplicate this button. We can move to the right. Let's change this to the right. Now go to Screen GUI, to the plus icon, and let's add a text label. Change the size again, so that it uses the first values. Now we can put this in between here. Let's change the text. Let's say shirt. Enter. And make the text skilled again. Now you can see what I'm going for. So at least you'll be able to toggle the shirts. Now next, let's change these button names. Let's change this to Previous. And this button will be Next. This will make the buttons easier recognizable when we start scripting. Let's call it Text Label Shirt. Let's put these buttons inside the shirt. Now as you can see, these are they shrink, so we need to drag them out again. So, now click on this text label here, and press Ctrl D, duplicate it. I put this below, and change the text to pants. Also change the name here. Now we create a nice environment for the background. I would have something made for another game. I will use this as my background. You can build anything you like. 
I'm going to make a stand for the plate to stand on. So I create a cylinder. Let's see, something like this. I'm going to insert a dummy to see how it looks. So go to plugins, build a rig, block rig. So this is going to be the player here. This is just uh, to see how it looks. Let's move this a bit. It looks fine. Now we need a way to tell the script where the camera is. So to do that, we create a part, a block. Select it, go to the properties, go to the surface, click on the front surface. Now the front slide is sliding up. So this side is the front. We are going to line up the camera with this block. So wherever this block is facing with the front is where the camera will be facing. So make sure that the front is facing toward the character. Let's turn around the character. So we want the camera to be about here. And point it downwards a little. Let's change the rotation increments. Let's see how that looks. Something like that. That should be all right for now. Make sure this part is anchored. So select it and select anchor. Otherwise it's just gonna fall down. Now select the part that you want the plate to stand on. Click on the part to change its name. And I change it to C spawn. I think customization spawn. Now we can delete the dummy. And we can make a start with the code. Now go to the screen GUI, click on the plus icon, and create a local script. Now let's start with the camera. So to get the camera, we say local cam equals workspace dot current camera. Now since the camera is attached to the player, you have to change the settings to scriptable so that we can manipulate the camera. Say cam dot camera type equals anim dot camera type dot scriptable. So now we are able to script the camera. So now we want to move the camera on top of the camera part. So first let's rename this so we can more easily use it in the script. So let's call this camera location. So now we can say cam.cframe equals workspace dot camera location dot cframe. Now if you go to play, we can see that it doesn't work. That's because the UI loads before the character. 
So we change the camera position to the camera location, but afterwards the character spawns and hijack the camera back. So before we do this, we need to make sure the player is already fully spawned. So to do that, we can do local player equals game dot players local player say repeat wait until workspace wait let's remove that move this below this one so wait until cam dot camera subjects equals not equal nil. So basically the script waits until the player connects to the camera and then we continue. So now if you go to play can see the camera works. So next let's make the player spawn on this circle. So first we need to declare the character so that the script knows what the character is. So local char equals player player dot character or player Edit. Wait. This means the character is play.character, or if it can't find the character, it waits until the character is loaded. So now we have the character. We can say char move to. We want the player to move to this circle. We called it CS spawn, C spawn. So we can say workspace dot C spawn dot position. Now the character will spawn on top of this. So now we want to turn the player around. This may not be a problem for you. I just happen to have my house in the wrong direction. So now to rotate a model, you need to use C frames. Now only do this if your character is rotated wrongly, in the wrong direction. So the char set primary part C frame. frame dot angles zero mat dot red we want to turn it 180 degrees if yours is turned in another direction you want to use a different angle so basically what this does is it changes the C frame position of the character to its current position that changes the angle 180 degrees. Beautiful. Perfect. All right, now go to the screen GUI. Go to the shirt, the plus icon, and you want to add a string value. 
change its name to current. So in the script, we're going to use this value to store the shirt that's currently selected. So every time the player clicks on next, this value will change to the next shirt. So we can copy this and do the same for pants. And now go to replicate storage, plus icon, and create a folder. Name it customization. Now create another folder inside the folder and call it shirts. And copy that and call it pants. So in here we are going to store all the shirts and pants options that the player will have. We can go to shirts and go on plus icon, type shirt. And here in the shirt templates, you can put input any shirt that you want from the Roblox catalog. So now we're on the Roblox website. Go to Avatar Shop. Go to Clothing. Shirts. Pick a cool shirt. Copy this link. Go back to Studio. And paste it in here. And press Enter. And now we can use it for our script. I do this a couple times for all the shirts that you want in the game. And change the clothing name to whatever name you want. Let's say shirt one. Epic shirt. And do the same thing for pants. Click on the plus icon. Type pants, and you can just copy paste the pants code in here, the link. Now, if you're done placing all the shirts and pants in the folders, go back to your script. I'm going to place two minuses to make a comment. Say shirts and pants. So here I will write the code for the shirts and here for the pants, so it doesn't get too confusing. So first we need to collect all the shirts in the folder. So we say, so we say local all shirts equals game.replicate storage, we say wait for child. Customization, then again, wait for child shirts, and then we say get all children. So all the shirts is game dot replicate storage. Then we wait for this fold to load. Then we wait for this folder to load. Then we get everything inside this folder. So everything inside this folder is now inside this variable. Now let's first give the player something to wear. So we'll say char wait for child shirt dot shirt template equals all shirts and between brackets one shirt lights Right. 
So this one means that it's the first shirt out of all these shirts. So now we also want to update the current. The variable we put in here. So we say script parents dot shirt dot current dot value equals one because it's the first shirt. Now let's copy this. Do the same for the pants. Let's change this to pants. Pants. This needs to be pants templates. That's and this one. Now let's try it out. We've got an error. All right, it's been a while since I've scripted. It all needs to go out of here. And here. It's just cat children. Now let's try again. <clears throat> Perfect. 